Hey guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I like to nerd out to the science behind how we can keep our houseplants happy and to multiply them in our homes. So if you're into that kind of content, do subscribe to my channel and send me likes. In today's video, I will talk about uh, my favorite family of plants, which is the Dishkidia. I'm sure some of you have heard of this uh, plant family before and some of you may have experienced growing them. And most of you probably have failed at some point because uh, they're an actually a very difficult plant species to take care of. That's why I kind of pay special attention to them and, I, and they have won over my heart because of that. Uh, given the right conditions, they will thrive. And actually Thai people, uh, they have the best skills and experience and maybe even luck at growing Dishkidias. They grow them so well in Thailand. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll do an episode someday when, when I can travel there again on Dishkidias in Thailand and how they grow them because I would really love to know their secrets. And today for our purposes, I will show you my Dishkidia collections that I have at my home, uh, how I propagate and care for them, and maybe a little bit of backstory. That some of them were actually rescued, like they declined really badly. Uh, so I will tell you what I did right and wrong with them so you can learn. And they're actually a little bit pricey because um, the, the supply is not that high. And that's probably because the demand is not high as well. So I hope that I can help popularize them because they're truly uh, an interesting uh, family of plants. So I'm gonna take you on a quick tour uh, to where the plants actually live uh, so that you can have a feel of the environment that I put them in, I have grown them in. Uh, because this will be quite helpful. So without further ado, let's get this party started. So the first one that we have here is the Dishkidia pneumolaria and I got this in Bangkok, Thailand and it's actually flowering right now. So that's what the flowers look like. Very cute. They actually look like little Hoya flowers. Um, I don't know if you can see closely here. Yeah, but they are super tiny. Um, super cute. And they are all uh, very slow growers, just so you know, especially the variegated form. And this one is grown in a cocoa husk. Look at the roots. They're all, <laughs> they're all over the place. Um, and I'll show you on the screen how I water them, which is basically to bottom water it uh, because if you water uh, from the top, the, the water is not going to get into the middle of the husk. So you have to soak them in water for a very long time, uh, sometimes up to a few hours. Uh, and they don't need frequent watering. The, the, sort of the, the main mistakes that I've done before, why I've killed so many of them was because of overwatering. So Dishkidias hate water. like. Uh, if you look at the leaves, they're actually very, very succulent, they're thick. So one way that you know when to water them is by squeezing the leaves. If it feels thick and succulent-like, then you just kind of don't water them. And the Shkidias have a this, uh, symbiotic relationship with ants, which we, we will talk about in the other species. So that suggests to me that they may uh, prefer a little bit more fertilizing, a little bit more feed as well, to help them grow. And next we have this beautiful Dishkidia pectinoides. I actually just bought this from Moon Hoya. Uh, spoiler alert, a Hoya nursery tour will be coming up very soon. And um, uh, so Dishkidias actually form, uh, not all of them, but some of them actually form these uh, ant sacs. So they're actually hollow on the inside and, and they would allow ants to live inside. So the, the proof material or any uh, leftover foods will be uh, fertilizing this plant. And in, and in return, the ants will, will protect this plant from pests and other invaders. So they have a really good symbiotic relationship over uh, probably millions of years. I'm not sure how long ants have been around, but it, it takes them a while to evolve this kind of relationship. And this is so beautiful. And as you can see, um, this is why I love this video so much. So this is what a typical growth pattern looks like. And that's, these are the adventitious uh, roots or the aerial roots. And if you want to propagate them, this is where they will root. Um, so you can just cut it, cut it off, take off a few leaves and stick that in water. And that should become a root. When there's enough root like this, I, you can actually plant them straight into soil. And the Shkidas actually don't like uh, the traditional soil. They do like uh, to be in coconut husk and very woody type thing where they can really grip onto the media. Look at this, and look at these flowers. They are, uh, I don't think the flower is open yet. These are still closed. But again, they are very, very similar to Hoyas in this way. So that's beautiful. I've actually killed uh, some of these. I have some cuttings upstairs, but they, they're taking so long to uh, root up and to grow. So this, this specimen here is actually probably very old. It takes them a while to get here. I would say 
at least two to three years to get to this size. So over here, there's actually some beautiful hanging pots that I got from Bangkok. It's quite nice. Um, and uh, this is a Dishkidia ruskifolia. It's also very common, actually. This is called, also called the Million Hearts. Uh, again, they're also very prone to overwatering, so just be careful when you're watering them. Uh, originally, I got this as a smaller plant about one year ago in a coconut husk, and I was soaking it probably every week or so, and it just rotted off. So I moved it into a, a bark, I don't know if I can show you in here, probably, uh, into pine barks uh, and a little bit of worm casting. So they seem to thrive in here. So it, I barely water this at all. Now I, I water it probably once every uh, one to two weeks. And because they have so many plant material here and there's so many roots in there that I can actually water it a bit more frequently than before when it was still a young plant. But uh, there's actually a little bit of a sun stress uh, factor happening here, which is really beautiful. So a lot of dishkidias will actually turn red like Hoyas when they're given a uh, sun stress. And I can actually tell um, that the leaves are, are like right now it's really thick and full. Like I don't need to water this right now. And uh, this one is watered the same way that I water my other dishpedias, which is just to bottom water it. Or if it rains, I will just hold off on the watering for a few days and let it be. And next to it is a dishpedia imbricata. And this is one that really wants to climb onto something. And it does form um, these bulletae. I don't know the right way to pronounce it. It's those, uh, again, it's those hollow shells. That's very typical in uh, Dishkidia. I can show you the underside. This is so satisfying to watch. So it's hollow and it will cover the whole, um, it, will, it will just keep wrapping around. And preferably, this wants to be um, stuck, let's say on a tree. It just wants to be shingling up a tree. Uh, this will provide a safe, safe uh, shelter and passageway for ants to move about. So this is how their symbiotic relationship actually works. Um, and as you can see, it's already bleeding a little bit of sap. I must have injured it a little bit when I was flipping it over. Uh, so with Tishkidias, they actually bleed uh, a toxic sap. Uh, it's white in color. It's very similar to Hoyas, I guess. Uh, and you don't want to get that on your skin where possible. Uh, I watered this guy the same way. This is also in a coconut husk. So. Um, I basically bottom water it and let it soak for a while. And I tend to add some fertilizers in the, in the bottom water mix because as I mentioned earlier, Dishkidia seem to have, uh, in nature, they seem to get a lot of nutrients and probably nitrogen and other decomposing material from the ants in which they uh, live with. So this is suggesting to me that they do want a little bit more feed than uh, let's say your Hoyas. I just remember that I've actually uh, cut one of these off and put it into one of my moss poles uh, to try to encourage it to stick to the moss pole and grow uh, up on, on it. And what happened was that uh, mushrooms started forming in that pot for a completely different reason. That's why I took that cutting out and the cutting is now living in its own pot. But uh, in the future, I would really like to experiment with taking more of these cuttings and putting them and the base of my like philodendron or monstera moss poles so that they can live together with these uh, aeroids because they, they do appreciate climbing up the moss pole and I would want to see the shape they take. They will probably have more of these uh, round husk like shapes as they shingle up the moss pole. And again, I want to remind you that they cannot be overwatered. So back off on the watering, like uh, treat them like a cactus and succulent. That's how you can have your Dishkidias uh, survive in your care. Let, not to mention thrive, just to survive alone, uh, it requires a lot of uh, patience in watering. And right here we have the Dishkidia, uh, Green Dragon, Dragon Jade, Numularioides. <laughs> There's a couple of names for these. And they are super adorable. Um, and this is very, very slow growing. Um, and they're quite pricey. They're quite difficult to find. And the growth patterns are so beautiful. Look at how the little things are forming at the edge. Um, again, they don't want to be overwatered. And I exposed this to a little bit of direct sunlight by accident one time, and some of the tips actually burnt up. So they cannot be in bright uh, light. And as far as I know, this is actually a hybrid. So. Yeah, I'm not sure a lot about the care. And it's living in the same uh, coconut husk. So I do keep it on the dry side. Um, it's given me some yellow 
le- uh, I don't know if these are leaves or not. I guess you can call them leaves. Uh, some of them have dried off before and fallen off. So they cannot be overwatered. Uh, and I bottom watered this as well, along with my other dish kiddies. I kind of just bottom watered them all at the same time in, in one pot and leave and forget it there for a few hours. Uh, over here, we have some of the cuttings from the Dishkiria Major. As you can see, they propagate really easily. So I basically just jammed some of the uh, stem into this coconut husk and kept it moist. And I'm surprised, I haven't seen this for a long time because I haven't checked on them. But this one seems like it's gonna be forming that rattle skull uh, look. It's, gonna, it's starting to curve up, as you can see. So this was not here before. These were actually small leaves. And this one's starting to uh, curl up too. So it's gonna start to uh, turn into this uh, beautiful uh, husks. Nice. And over here we have some Dishkidia ruskifolia variegata. I actually did a propagation video on these before. I got them as two tiny strands from this little pot. And I actually uh, put this pot next to it and I started pinning down the, 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 the stems onto this pot. And then they rooted and finally I cut it off and now I separated it into two different pots. So they're really, really taking off. Again, this, take, this took a long time. This took around, I would say six months just to get here. So I'm gonna keep propagating them until I get a really full plant. And these guys are actually quite pricey. So maybe I will be able to sell some of the cuttings or maybe open a Dishkidia nursery because that would be a dream. I love Dishkidia so much. They're so cute. And propagating them is a bit of a challenge. It's not as easy as Hoyas. Uh, next to it, we have a Dishkidia uh, Numa Numalaria, which is what I showed you before actually. This is just propagate that I experimented with. So I cut these butterflies and I just kind of stuck them on top of the soil and this has rooted as you can see. And there's plenty more in there. I just, I'm not going to dig them up, but there's quite a lot in there. So hopefully they'll root up and they will become uh, tiny plants. Also, I've done uh, one where I took the whole strand and just stuck it on the top of the soil, which is this one. And it's been like this for about uh, two months, I would say, and the aerial roots are forming. So I'm guessing that some of them may have uh, found their way down into the, the moist soil and then they would uh, kind of propagate that way. And hiding back here, we have a Dishkiria Oyanta. Oyananta, <laughs> I'll put the name on the screen. Uh, this has grown so much for me. Again, this is a plant rescue. This was in a coconut husk uh, media and at that time I did not know how to water it. I was watering it either too much or too little. It was drying up and it's also over watering. But I rescued it and I put it in the... Uh, oh, this is actually really thick. I haven't really touched them in a while and this is very very luscious. I love it. Uh, and uh, I put it in, a, in just pine bark basically. Pine bark and slow release fertilizer. And I water it whenever I can remember. So uh, that's probably about once a week or so. Um, they, they're truly a plant that you can really set and forget once it's established. Just do, again, reminder, do not overwater them. They will turn yellow, they'll turn to mush very, very quickly. And this one's actually given me a lot of very, like, fully white leaves. And I need to cut these off because they're not doing anything for the plant. And next to it, here we have another uh, uh, green dragon, dragon jade, <laughs> Dishkidia, and it's giving me a new branch. I just saw this. This is so cute. They're very, very slow growers. So um, these are also, I don't know, the camera's not gonna focus. Hang on, let me see if I can. All right, sorry. Uh, and hang on, let me bring you over here, actually. Yeah, there are some cool new growths happening down there. Um, and I don't, know if, I don't know if you can see the growth point here, but I, I guess apparently it's trying to branch out. So that means that it's probably doing well. Uh, I've had him for a very long time. This is probably about nine months old and it's done nothing and it's living in a, a pine bark with perlite and a little bit of slow release fertilizer and again i don't really water this much at all uh, they seem to be okay with underwatering like they they can tolerate it they're not gonna be fussy if you forget even for a whole week or two weeks without watering them so go ahead and underwater your dishkidias guys so over here we have a dishkidia pectinoides they have been like this for a few months now. Uh, I would say a bit four or five months. And it's still alive. Um, this one's separate. It's got some aerial roots when I just put it on the top of the soil. So I'm guessing it's rooted down. And this is a cutting. Some of the friends didn't make it. But yeah, these guys are just hanging on. So I just kind of water it whenever I remember to. 
Um, I don't let it dry out completely. I feel the weight of the pot, and like right now it's still heavy because I watered it, I think, yesterday. So I hope you guys can take off because you're super cute. All right, so here we have some more Dishkiria imbricata. And this is the, the original coconut husk that it was grown in. A lot of them died back. It, this was a much fuller plant. Um, but I, I, I managed to keep taking cuttings of these. Some of them survived, some of them didn't. I really want to show you the inside. This is so beautiful. This is why I love Dishkiria. You can tell from the anatomy that it really wants to cling onto something and it wants to take over. So this is quite beautiful. And I water this kind of the same way I water my other dishkidias um, in a coconut husk, which is to um, just soak it in water and just let it hang out for like a few hours in that water. And I do it uh, for this one, this is super prone to overwatering. So I do it once every two weeks or so. So over here we have some baby uh, green dragon, jade dragon uh, dish KDS. And um, the cuttings have are doing okay. Um, let me take you to a better light actually. So they all rooted perfectly and a new growth has emerged. So basically I just took a cutting off it. I just took a few leaves off and just stabbed it into um, some soil and it's, it's doing well. So I guess this is how you can propagate them. Over here we have some Dishkidia ovata or known as the watermelon Dishkidia because of the watermelon uh, pattern on the leaves. And a lot of people think that they're peperomias or hoyas, but they're not. And this is actually the easiest Dishkidia to take care of. Um, the, they're most forgiving and they're the fastest growing as well. And if you give them some sun stress, the new growth will be red in color. It's so beautiful. Uh, so this is actually just a cutting. The parent plant is actually uh, not doing so well. I'll show you in a little bit. All right, so moving this tour along, here is the parent plant of the Dishkidia from before, and this is died. I have been meaning to take this off for a long time. If I took this off earlier, I would have probably been able to propagate it, but now that it's all dried up, I probably, I can't salvage this. So I'm gonna have to throw this away. All right. So yeah, this is the remaining plant and they're actually doing well. A lot of things are growing. Sorry for the hard water stain. I did some pest controls a while ago. And the growth is so beautiful. Look at this. Ah, I just love looking at it. Yeah, and it, it's just happy. I guess I water this almost every day because it's in a very well draining soil in terracotta and it's getting a lot of, as you can see, a lot of evaporation here, a lot of wind, air circulation. Uh, I feel like it needs a little bit more sun. I may take off one. I, have, I may take off one sheet because it's now getting um, the the direction of the sun is just changing right now. So yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I just saw this. This is cute. So this is a, sorry off topic, but it's an anthurium, I guess. I kept this pot. Something died in here. I don't remember what it was. So now I know it's an anthurium. I guess. How cute. Okay, so up here is a Dishkidia Jerry. Uh, it's named after my favorite Spice Girl. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and I don't know what to say about it. As, as I actually see this very commonly as hanging basket plants, and they are usually in larger baskets, which which tells me that they are quite inexpensive and they're fast growers. And so far, in my case, I'm going to show you the top. In my case, they are quite fast growing, and they have been very forgiving with my watering habits uh, or rather in my inconsistent watering habits so I guess this is a very easy Dishkidia to take care of but I don't really think that this is the prettiest or the most interesting okay so here is the rattle skull Dishkidia or the Dishkidia major look how beautiful so there is one main uh, wood stem in the middle and I just wrapped it around in cocoa husk when I got it and just tied it around uh, and again, this, these are all hollow on the inside. And if you move it around, it, it rattles, kind of like a like a musical instrument. It's super cute. So ants would live in here. And actually, when I got it, ants did live in here. They were crawling all over the place, and the ants were biting me. So I just sprayed uh, bygone or <laughs> insecticide on it, and the ants completely died off. The the parents, the the mother, the the children, all of them gone. <laughs> in retrospect, that's probably not a very good idea because. The plant probably needs the ant in there to be healthy, but 
oh well, what's done is done. Um, and it's uh, the, the plan I showed you before, which is downstairs, uh, that was propagated from one of these runners. So these are the runners that are coming off from this plant. And it's now trying to find uh, a place to settle. It's trying to uh, clone itself. So this is actually forming a little bit of a husk as well. I'm excited to see that. But they started with teeny tiny leaves. So cute. Sorry, this is, this is one example. So they come up with like these tiny leaves. And it just they want to scramble all over the place. They want to take over and they want to grow these sinister looking, uh, I don't know what they call it, like rattle skulls, I guess. Really uh, quite a joy to have. And how again, how I water this, actually, it's just, I, I water this every single day. I just uh, put a jet stream of water right in the middle and just let it try to soak in as much water as possible. And it just dries out within minutes and I leave it alone. Keep in mind again that Dishkidias want to live in dry, dry conditions. They only want to be wet a few minutes a day. That's it. All right, so hiding in here, <laughs> that's the Dishkidia living under here. Ooh, try to get my Monstera and Palm out of the way. So look at that, it's taking off, how cute. So this Dishkidia is growing out of a twig when I got it. And I just wrapped it a little bit of sphagnum moss and also some coconut, uh, ha cocoa coir. Uh, and then just I just used these ass hooks to kind of hang them on the balcony rails. And it's just taken off. Um, the, the, it's probably too dark for you. The, uh, the light green are actually new growth. So this one is actually quite a fast grower in my care. And uh, it's getting uh, sort of medium to bright indirect light. And I, again, I spray this with water basically once a day. And again, it dries out almost immediately, which kind of give you, gives you a hint as to the kind of conditions that, that makes Dishkidias thrive. So if you have Dishkidias in, uh, living in soil medium, maybe you want to think about liberating them. Look at how long this is. I'm actually going to propagate this. I didn't, I didn't see how long this was until this tour. This is amazing. And I love the, the leaves. They're so cute. Look at, they all have aerial roots. They're like telling you, cut me, cut me, propagate me. I'm ready to take over the world. <laughs> How cute. Oh my God. I adore these guys. I highly recommend for you guys to have these around. They're just quite a joy to have. So I'm gonna go find this guy. I did, have not seen him in a long time and I'm glad he's doing well. So this is some uh, Dishkiri Imbricata cuttings that I just jammed in here with some coconut husk uh, and just kind of water it, water it whenever I water it. Ooh, this is crispy. Whenever I water this uh, maiden hair fern, because this maiden hair fern needs to be watered every day. It, I cannot miss any watering. So some of the excess water is just gonna drip down into this and it's doing well. So again, keep in mind here, I probably should give it a bit more light actually. Keep in mind here that it wants to dry out completely. It's gonna thrive if you don't let it sit in any water at all. So this is a really good lesson learned for me on Dishkidias. So up here we have more Dishkidia uh, imbricata next to some Hoya retusa. And I believe this was the cutting that was actually climbing up onto a moss pole. I lost some of the parent leaves because I was moving them around too much. But this is the new growth that come from it. And I think it wants to do this. Hang on, let me see if I can help it. Yeah, it wants to do something like this. Or if I have a wood plank or some kind of moss pole, I'm sure it would enjoy climbing up. So yeah, that's what happens with this one. Actually, this might be cute to just go loop around and back. Yeah, um, so I ha actually have a lot of Dishkida cuttings because I killed so many of them that these days I just take cuttings as plant insurance because I know that sometimes the plant parent don't make it. And this is another one of the cuttings. This is from the... Um, oh, it's cute. Um, I, haven't, I haven't picked up my plants in a long time. This is from the Dishkidia Lutnumo... Num, I forgot their names. It's the first plant that I showed you. Uh, this is taken from there. Uh, and I just stuck cuttings in there. And this one, I just stuck the whole strand onto the soil. And as you can see in the middle, new growth has emerged. So, and these ones actually, I actually stuck the, the branch into the soil. And sorry, this one is on top of the soil and this is into the soil. So the one that I planted into the soil is actually uh, rooted and grown faster than the ones I just kind of place on top. How cute. So down here we have another Dischidia ruscifolia. And I got this because I wanted to learn uh, how it does in a different media. So I got this from Moon Hoya. And it's doing all right. It's not doing, uh, it's not growing super fast, but it's, it's 
putting out new growth. Uh, and actually, the reason why it's so sparse is because I took some cutting, and the cutting actually live here. So I just jammed, um, as you can see, there's already a lot of aerial roots. So I just jabbed it into uh, some pine bark, and I water this every day. I just douse water onto it. And it uh, seemed to be uh, surviving, but it's very slow to root up and probably uh, to put out new growths. Okay, and then these are actually two dishkidias, and I don't know how to show you them because they are actually uh, tangled into each other. So let me see if I can get my camera to... To come down. Yeah, I, I don't remember the species name to be exact. Uh, I will include that on the screen. And I decided to hang them in a pot like this. Sorry, my microphone wire. Uh, but you get my point. Hang on, I'm seeing, I'm trying to see if I can find another view. Uh, <laughs> this is impossible. I can't show you guys. So it's basically an inverted, it's an inverted pot. It's a pot like this that I, in, I inverted. And then I wrapped uh, the top with cocoa coir so the plant doesn't fall out. Uh, and then uh, just hung it upside down. It's kind of like this. So how I water is I just put pour water into these uh, bottom hole until the water kind of just trickles down, and it's loving it. It's enjoying um, the, this kind of living condition and watering. This is getting a bit of a bright indirect light with a bit of morning direct because it's uh, sort of facing outside of my balcony. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it except that it's grown a lot. Uh, over here. And this actually looks a lot like the Hoya lacunosa, but uh, I know that Dishkidias and Hoyas, a lot of them look very similar. I don't know what differentiates them, probably a flower or something else. But yeah. I'm gonna show you some angle from here. There. This is what they look like uh, <laughs> under the hood. So I hope that you found the tour interesting and maybe you've discovered some uh, plants to add to your wish list. They truly are a magnificent uh, species uh, and I, I do recommend it if you are a more advanced uh, plant parent, of course. Uh, I'm at Botanist on Instagram. Do DM me if you have any questions about plant care and propagations. And do subscribe to this channel, send me likes and comment down below because this will let YouTube know to recommend my video to other plant lovers who hasn't found me yet. Uh, meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. Uh, till the next episode, see you later.